G'day guys, welcome to this episode of Aussie English. Today, I have a little something different for you guys, a little something different. So, today, I have the pleasure of sitting down for a chin wag with Charlie, who is one of the two-man team from Real English with Real Teachers. These guys are over on YouTube where you will see the first part of this interview. This is the second part, so I highly recommend that you check out the first part. Whether or not you do it before or after this episode, it doesn't matter that much as we talked about a lot of different things in our sit down. So, Charlie is from Britain originally, although I think he was saying his father is Australian. So, he's living in Australia at the moment and he wanted to chat to me about differences between British culture and Australian culture. So, we talk about a whole bunch of different things comparing British versus Australian culture, specifically things like Christmas and holidays and schooling, everything like that, okay? So, it's a pretty interesting interview if you're interested in the differences, the subtle differences between Britain and Australia. It's also obviously a good chance for you to practice your listening comprehension with different accents today. And beyond that, guys, keep an eye out if you're a member of the premium podcast as I'm going to upload the entire hour-long interview on the website for you to access as a members-only episode. Anyway, guys, This has been a long enough intro, let's get into it. Yeah, so um, one thing that I've I've thought about asking you, um, because a lot of my students, they have uh, different vocabulary based on their their country, like a lot of Russians, they call their cousins, their sisters and brothers. And I just wanted to, (laughs) I just wanted to check with Australians, I imagine it's fairly similar to Britain, but what would you like, what would you class as family for you? Uh, that's a good question. I think, well, obviously genetic ties to anyone who's actually, you know, blood related to me. That'd mm-hmm. be generally family. I think we can extend that to very close friends sometimes. But I think by and large, I wouldn't refer to, you know, really, really close friends as brother or sister or anything like that or cousins. I okay. might... Sometimes with children, so now that I have a son and I hang out with friends who are very close, I might refer to them as uncle, you know, so-and-so to my Mm -hmm. son to get him to kind of associate this person with, okay, this person's not just a friend or not just some, you know, old person that Pete knows, but to to kind of try and bridge that gap. But, yeah, it is different, I think, across cultures. I know that especially in Asian countries, they tend to have um, a lot of different labels for, you know, members of the family, friends, they'll even refer to people. I think in Indonesia, they would refer to older men as uncle to show respect and they have yeah. those kinds of things, which is really interesting. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what about fairly, in Britain? Fa- it sounds fairly similar. Yeah. Yeah. But would you, would you um, like spend Christmas with the, the wider extended family, like the cousins and the grandparents and, and maybe Absolutely. even the great grandparents if you're lucky to have them around? Well, my son's got great grandparents, but my grandparents, I would always... Yeah, spend Christmas with them, and and this will be something that's different for both of us. Christmas here is always hot, so I'm very used it's, it's to confusing me so much Christmas. Things Christmas trees right here. Well, it's right so here. funny too for us, right? Because we'll get the Christmas tree and we'll put tinsel on it, and you know, which is meant to represent the snow, and yet we'll walk outside and go to the beach with a surfboard, <laughs> and play play cricket and stuff, and and that kind of like compartmentalization of the mind doesn't seem to be very obvious until later on. You're like. Why do we watch all these snowy movies about Christmas when it's summer? And then you realize, oh, they're from the Northern Hemisphere, of course. You know, that's when it's winter. But yeah, so I think that would be culture shock for me. The first time I ever spend uh, Christmas in the Northern Hemisphere, I would be like, this is weird, really weird, you know. (laughs) But I would imagine a good weird. Wouldn't it be like, oh, this is what it's meant to be? (laughs) I don't know. Well, that's hard, right? To know what's what's meant to be. I guess it would know, make sense in terms of that. But I'd be I'd be like, so this is the time where everyone has barbecues and goes outside, and we spend time walking around, going to the beach, surfing, you know. And yet, yeah. you would say go to Canada and spend it inside because it's negative thirty outside. I'd be like, but yeah. it's the holidays. You're meant to be out and about. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so you've got a real like association to Christmas and barbecues outdoor on yeah. the beach. Yeah, hundred percent. And mm. it's set up differently. I think I don't know what it's like in Britain, but I know that in America, you they have massive holidays. I think from like September until uh, January or something, right? You, they get like three months off because um, 
I think it's there. Is it then that they get the big gap because they want to enjoy the outdoors and outside before winter? Whereas in Australia, you will have little chunks of holidays throughout the school year. And then over Christmas, it's like a month and a half, maybe like six weeks. You don't get like some uh-huh. massive, massive we break to enjoy weeks. the summer. We get the six weeks in July, August. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and so that's we... the spring break equivalent in America, right? Where they get a big chunk over spring. I think spring break is Easter. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how quite to answer that, that query. Yeah. But yeah, so we get, we get the six weeks in the middle of the, the summer, the, the yep. peak <laughs> of our summer. And then we get like half term in o- October time, maybe November. And then December is, is the, the Christmas holidays. Oh, yeah. crazy it's funny but, how they get set up around that though right like mm. around the seasons more so than the holidays i think yeah 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 most definitely and so it's completely flip reversed for you guys and yeah um do you you still um enjoy watching the the festive films like in the snow and things like that i think it's just something you never question because you grow up and you just they're always the big ones from america or even from i remember love actually right that came yeah. out from britain And that was a Christmas film, right? Yeah. And you just don't, it's just, you know, it's summer. But when we flick on the telly, the the TV, you're going to see a lot of different movies from America and Britain and they're all going to be snowy movies like Home and Alone, right? That was all snow and everything when he was in New York over Christmas and you just, you never think about it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So, you don't really connect it, but uh, you just know that the the rest of the world is experiencing a snowy Christmas. Yeah, you just know that's their Christmas. That's their version of it. It always has snow and ours just always has summer, you know, and they'll have the the jokes here in Australia where you'll see Santa in like board shorts on the beach with his surfboard or something. Oh, that's that's <laughs> great. I like that. Do, do you think there are any films out there of Aussie Christmas, like celebrating uh, the fact that you're on the beach? I think, I think there should be. There's one I remember watching as a kid, though. I don't know if it was specifically focused on Christmas. It's called Bush Christmas. I think Bush, it's one of Nicole Kidman's first movies okay. and she's like 15 and ginger. She had red hair when she was young. Okay. So, that's a really interesting one about uh, kids and they, you know, I think they get stuck in a well, something interesting happens out in the bush. So, it's a good way of seeing what bush life is like out in the rural areas of Australia and I think it's over Christmas, obviously, but um, yeah. it's from like the 80s. So, that was a good movie I remember watching as a kid during wow. Christmas, Bush Christmas. Yeah. Bush Christmas. I think I'll yeah. watch it. Maybe I'll watch it this <laughs> Christmas because it's my first Christmas away from home and I'll be on the beach. Man, you should. And I think yeah. too, you know, we associate things like, um, oh, what is it, like Australia Day. That is around January, I think January the 25th, right? And so, we have, we used to have, I don't know what the channel sta- channel's called anymore, but it was Triple J, a certain radio station. And they used to count down 100 most common songs on that day because everyone would be at the beach hanging out, you know, for Australia Day. So, that's Ah. interesting too in terms of if you ask the average Aussie what Australia Day is all about, they'll be like, oh, it's a piss up. You go have a barbie and listen to Triple J and just get smashed, you know. (laughs) That sounds like the Aussies that I've met. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, Oh, that's funny. Okay. And um, so, that that must mean that you've got a bit more of an awareness of like the other side of the world or you know north hemisphere because in england we didn't really we never obviously heard about the the equivalent in the southern hemisphere well you got home and away and neighbors right on tv those two tv shows that was about it (laughs) this is true yeah that is our cultural awareness of australia well i think that's the thing right we have little brother syndrome where we're inside a house looking out and i think you guys are inside a house looking in or maybe looking out one window towards the us right yeah yeah. And so I think it's kind of like, do you know the, the relationship between Norway and Sweden? Where I think it's Sweden obviously produces a ton more um, TV shows and everything. So all the, I think the Norwegians can understand the Swedes because they watch all their TV. Oh. And the Swedes don't understand the Norwegians because they don't care. Right. Okay. And so I think it's, it's like that, but a massive scale. Britain's not too bad because you guys have a closer affiliation, I think, with Australia as we're in the Commonwealth still. Yeah. But I think the US definitely, like, I've, spoken to people from the US in my accent, just like this, and they'll be like, I don't understand you. And you'd be like, oh, okay. I don't think I've got a strong accent. It's different, but it's not like, you know, 
Scottish or, you know, uh, <laughs> Southern Texan or something where it's so strong. But because we're watching movies all the time, like I can hear American accents and tell you where they're from, you know. Mm. I can't imagine that someone and British as well, you know, you watch Game of Thrones and you get so used to, oh, that's, you know, that's from Yorkshire, that's from Scotland or whatever. And you're like, ah, I see how they're doing that. Yeah, but because we're practice. so exposed, we're expo- so exposed to your um, accents and to American accents and everything and culture, you know, we, we know a lot about it. But you quite often meet Americans who will just be like, don't know the next thing about Australia. What's the capital? Isn't Sydney the capital of Australia? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> just like New, no, New York. <laughs> New York's the capital of America, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had some um, eye-opening moments. I was uh, applying to, to go to the gym in Ohio, America, and uh, the, the lady said, oh, uh, I've met a couple of um, people from, from where you're from. They were really friendly. They were really nice. And then you they call said, them my people. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, and then, and then I said, oh, OK, I'm from uh, near London. And she said, oh, no, these guys, they were from England. H- how long does it take to get to London from England? I was like, wow. Good question. That's meta. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long is a piece of string? Yeah. Uh, Jesus. That is crazy. What's, what was it like for you, though, coming to Australia where... Were the accents tough to wrap your head around, especially the stronger, broader accents, or was it just ah, this is you know much of the same thing? Because uh, my dad's half Australian, I've gotcha. always had a little bit of a, an influence. He's always tried to make me support Australia when I go to school and I get beaten the shit out of. But um, <laughs> so yeah, I've always had the exposure there, and it's hilarious when we go on a trip to Australia. My dad is very, very like he speaks middle class English. BBC kind of language or accent, and uh, he gets off the plane. He's like, "Good eye, mate. How's it going?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blends in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, it's good fun noticing the differences. Um, How do you look at us too, in terms of being part of the Commonwealth? Because I always wonder that. I know that you know. I can imagine the Queen kind of looks down her nose a little bit at the other countries that are, you know, ah, this is where we sent all of our criminals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I always wonder what it's like looking at Australia from the outside, because obviously from the inside we're very, you know, well, I know what to expect and what it is. Yeah. But did you have certain preconceived notions, or I guess you grew up with it? Does the average Brit have preconceived notions of what an Aussie is or what our culture's like? I think. Um... I don't know if it's if it's accurate to say this, but um, I think the people that travel outside of Australia, the Australi- Australians that travel outside of, of it, aren't actually the the accurate stereotype of Australia. So they might be giving you a false name, a <laughs> bad one or a good one. <laughs> well, the majority of them certainly feel like very very comfortable just expressing who they are and how they feel at any moment in time yeah and they love a good drink and they love a good party and they love to get their tops off and and wear um shorts and thongs in the most inappropriate weather i think that tends to be the same thing for brits here right the brits you'll like if i were to go to bondi bondi beach right now the average brit that i'm going to meet is going to be probably 22 years old wasted and, you know, has a pretty strong, maybe central northern accent, right? They don't, I mean, there'll be some southerners, but quite often you'll meet these, you know, yeah. what's going on there, mate? Isn't it great over here? And, and you, <laughs> you'll just be like, I'm pretty sure this doesn't represent the average, yeah, <laughs> the average Brit. Yeah. Well, it confuses me now because I, I think that kind of does in, mm. a, in a way. Oh, really? Okay. Because yeah, yeah. I can't comment. I haven't been there yet. So one day I'll be able to be like, oh my God, this is exactly Bondi Beach, but worse weather. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does highlight like when you go abroad to different countries and you hear the, the Brits that are abroad, it, yeah. makes me, it makes me think, oh, wow, this is, this is really what we sound like to other countries. And, well, it's funny with America yeah. because it tends to be that you don't meet any conservative Americans ever. When, you, when you're in Australia. So, the, the, every single American I'll meet will be from New York. Well, probably mostly California. So, they're pretty much Australian. And they come in terms of culture. And they come over here. They're, inver- they're incredibly left-leaning, um, open-minded, pro-gay marriage, smoking weed, whatever. Like, they're like, you know, do whatever you want. 
and you're like, where are all the Trump supporters? And then you realize there's like a they huge don't. demographic yeah. that just never thinks, oh, I'll go for a holiday in Australia. Yeah, or they don't even think about getting a passport. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly right. And I would imagine, I interviewed a guy on, on Aussie English recently from Yorkshire and he was a chimney sweep. And he told me that for wow. the first 30 or 40 years of his life, he never left um, his his suburb or something. He, he met his wow. wife who was 40 minutes away in Doncaster or something and he'd never left Sheffield or something like that. And I was just like, what? What? Like, how do you not leave? You, you, that, that's like me driving to Geelong from here, which is 25 minutes away. Like, how do you not? And that's a big thing between our cultures, right? My dad always says... In Australia, 100 years is a long time. In Britain, it's not. In Britain, 100 kilometers yeah. is a long way. And in Australia, yeah. it's not, right? Yeah. So, was that a weird thing to get your head around when you came here that you could drive in any direction effectively for four days and it's going to be the same accent? The countryside will change a little bit. You'll see different animals, but you'll have the same people. Whereas, obviously, in England you or Britain, you can drive for maybe, what, one day and then you're in a different country. Oh, not even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, to get to Scotland, right? You could do that in a day. Oh yeah, you could do that in like ten hours or something, depending on exactly yeah. where you are in the south. And, but, that, and that's yeah, from you could, here. You could... That's here to Canberra or here to Sydney, right? And that's probably like if Australia was this big, mm. that's that, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's ten hours. Yeah, it's a different animal. It's um, it's a weird one to get your head around, but um, I think uh, it's it's mm. also satisfying getting on the road and actually managing to go quite a distance. Because in the UK, you spend five hours on the road and you, you pretty much move yeah. a couple of miles. It's so congested and there's so many cities that the roads are going around. Whereas in, yeah. in Australia, like we, we went down from the Gold Coast to Sydney and it took about 10 hours. And I think we yeah. changed on like twice. We had yeah. two, two roads. That was it. It's, it's funny uh, when you look at the maps of Europe. Like if you look at the map of Europe and you look at roads... And it's just like you could literally, there's no patch of earth that's kind of like you couldn't walk to from the side of the road. Whereas in Australia, around the cities, it's like that in suburbia. But as soon as you get outside the cities, you know, there's just farmland, forest, bush. There's so much space that's just not utilized because it's arid environment. And I think that's a big difference too, right? That everyone thinks Australia is huge and it is, but it's not usable. You can't. Mm. We can't farm most of Australia. Yeah. You, you you can't really use the desert for anything, you know, really. So, it just gets left alone. All right, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Once again, go check out Real English with Real Teachers. If you guys are working on your British English, this is a great YouTube channel to go and check out. They interview a lot of different people. They talk about a lot of different topics that will help you with your everyday English and you'll get to practice your listening comprehension of British. Once again, Charlie, thanks so much for inviting me on for a chat. It was good fun. It was a good chin wag. There was lots of slang in there and I hope a lot of the information was interesting to say the least in terms of Britain versus Australia. Anyway, guys, don't forget again, if you want to check out the entire hour-long interview, sign up to the Aussie English Premium Podcast. Just go to aussieenglish.com.au and you can get access to that and you'll be able to listen to the hour-long interview. That's it for today, guys. I appreciate you listening to me. I appreciate you joining me as always and I'll chat to you soon. Peace. Peace.